gentlemen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. Hello, Colin. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right, we have half an hour, and that's never enough. I just wondered yeah. if, um, I know you won't be joining us in the lobby later, you, but um, Colin That's and true. Chris, <laughs> Colin and Chris, if, if you will be out in the lobby later on and anyone would like to say hello or thank you of for course, the talk. Of course, yes. Yeah. We'll, yes. We'll be there. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? definitely. Yes, can can everyone you. hit? Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Oh, hello, Hugh. Hello, <laughs> hello Chris. Hello, Colin. I'm not going to ask you any, any tough questions. No, I, I promise no maths questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to know how you, it's not the first time you've talked about the zombies in interviews, but how did you feel when Robert Schwartzman, actor, director, and musician himself, yes. suggested making a film? What was your first thought? Well, I think it was mixed feelings, really, because it, it is great to have your career documented by such a wonderful filmmaker as Robert. But amongst other things, we were a bit worried that there wasn't enough film of when we very first started. People didn't have cameras in those days. And we weren't quite sure how he could put a film together. So we were a little bit concerned about that. But he, he put us at ease and uh, explained some of the techniques they were going to use. And he, he is a master filmmaker. And when I say he put us at ease, he really did. It, it, all those interviews were just, just like having a conversation. In fact, some of those conversations were in my front room at home, <laughs> uh, come to think of it. He spoke to me for five hours <laughs> in the front room. And then I, I, missed, I missed the last bit because I just went for a wee. On, uh, so, <laughs> but I think he, was, he started playing the guitar, I think, didn't he, at the end? Yep. And I've been, I've been talking for five hours, and he said, come on, give us a song. <laughs> <laughs> and so we managed to slog through a song <laughs> at the end. But it, it, it was all, it was very natural, re re um, making the film with him, uh, uh, because, we, you know, we're, we're not people who have made lots of films, and so it was just great working with him. Hugh, yeah. what did you think? Um, That's right. I, I, I mean, I actually think it was probably the most um, most marvellous thing, really, that could have happened to us, as Colin quite rightly says, to document our lives uh, as we were, and a lot of snips and clip, clips from those previous days, not as many as I'd love them to have been, as you quite right say, Colin. Um, but, of course, he's documented us throughout our lives, I think made the most wonderful documentary, and uh, it was just fun. It was fun and great, just terrific to, uh, to to make it and be with the guys and of course the rapport was there and uh, you know I, I loved I loved the end result got to be honest did you know him already or was it kind of a blind date with a filmmaker huh. <laughs> it was a, it was a blind date with a filmmaker you're quite right yeah never had that before but there you go <laughs> What do you think, Chris? Well, I think it's fantastic. And, and, and ju I'm 80 now, right? So the, one of those scenes on there was at, my Sorry? was at my 21st birthday party we were playing at. <laughs> you know, that was such a long time ago. It was, it was 60 years. It's ridiculous. It's, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so Let's you want to talk about the years <laughs> that have passed. That's we're right. All, we're, all, we're, all, we're all still young at heart. Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't at all worried, Chris, about the amount of time it would take or whether you would like what, what he did with the best will in the world. It might have been something you wouldn't... You no, I thought it was fantastic. He did a fantastic job. And um, it came out surprisingly well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, considering the, who he was working with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to ask each of you to tell me, to, to tell me something that you, you would say if you were chatting to a friend after watching the film and, and they'd watch it, something that you didn't know or that surprised you about this beautiful documentary. Well, n the first thing I would say to anyone if I was dis describing this documentary is how emotional it makes you feel right. when you, s you see your whole life um, evolving in a film like that. And... Um, 
I wasn't going to watch it tonight um, because I, I've watched it once. It, it was premiered at the South by Southwest Festival in Austin in Texas, and I watched it once, and I think I came out a stone lighter than when I went in. <laughs> I, I felt a bit devastated at the end of it, but in a nice way. And I thought, well, I've seen it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to relive my life in an hour and a half again. <laughs> but I did, they found me a nice little box up the top there, and I. <laughs> I, I did watch it again, and, and I really enjoyed it. But to answer your question, mm. yeah, I, I would say that for, certainly for the people that are in it, that are in it, it is a, a very emotional experience. Mm. Especially um, uh, Paul's when yeah. uh, the, the Brian Wilson played. Don't worry, Don't worry I, baby. I, I had tears down my eyes. Yes, mm. yes. I felt it again yeah. tonight as well. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll see it again. And I and I will see it in St Albans next week, of course. And I can actually guarantee I'll have tears like you guys. I'll have tears in my eyes yet again because it's the it's the life story of our our family together from the beginning right the way through to where we are now. And it's not over yet by any stretch. And that's what amazes me, really. What is it that would make you cry? Or any particular moment? Um, I um. I don't know. I think it's probably Paul, yeah. I think it's probably Paul and the pictures of him. And, of course, that was the five zombies, as we knew then, and that was my life then. And, of course, you know, the sad loss of Paul. And uh, the, 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 the concert we did in um, San Francisco for him uh, was uh, a moment to treasure. And, uh, yeah, so that, that's probably where the, you know, the tight eyes will come again. I guess I would ask, you know, if we're in an audience seeing something that's really emotional, we can just sit there and sob into our hankies or knock back a drink. What happens when you're having to play in such an emotion? Do you just focus on what you're doing and think, I'll have a little cry later? I think a bit like, um, a bit like Elton John, if you remember, playing, um, as it were, Candle in the Wind for the dear late Diana. He, he must have taken himself in hand somehow, I don't know. Uh, but I would imagine when he walked off, he would have uh, uh, let it go yeah. and cried his eyes out, because that's what I would have done. Yeah. I, I always call those situations automatic pilot. You right. know, we've been doing this all our mm. life, and you can just, you can flick mm. a switch, and you, you do the show, and then the, yeah. minute, the minute you're off the stage, that, that's a different thing. Yeah. What also, also is nice, it continues because Cher has just done one of our songs in her Christmas album. And that was a big surprise, yeah, this will be our year. <laughs> which Colin did a great job on. Actually. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's number one, Chris. The, um, the album's number one. Is it? How do you know? Wow. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, is it really? Like, you let me know, Hugh. <laughs> so Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I want to be Chris's. I want to be Chris's friend because Chris wrote it, so he's going to make a fortune. He's a millionaire. He's a millionaire. <laughs> Likely, yeah. He's standing the drinks later. Um, so, too right. So, Chris, when you're talking to somebody about this documentary, obviously friends and other people will say who haven't seen it yet, who aren't here, or won't be in St Albans next weekend from the 10th to the 12th. Begin here festival, including a screening. What, what do you say about it? Besides, it was lovely of him to do it. Just see it, it's fantastically made. That's the whole thing. We've got all the stuff we, we didn't think it was in existence. Right. I, yeah. I know that Rod said in an interview that yeah. he was a bit worried there yeah. wasn't actually a film in it because there wasn't enough footage and where the hell would he find stuff? I know, I, I, and I completely agree with him. And funnily enough, I was just saying to my wife before we came in tonight, I think we all had reels of, was it called Super 8 or something like yes, that? Yes, yeah. I know I did. I had reels of Super 8. Uh, film, particularly when we were in America, and, uh, and at one time I had a very flash mate who was in advertising. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> and he was in advertising, and he said, oh, "You've got all these little reels of Super 8 film. I'll put that all on one big reel for you, and then it'll, you know, all be in one place." I've got some I blackmail you about soon. <laughs> you, you've got some you can no, blackmail. <laughs> blackmail you. <laughs> well, anyway, he took these films and put them onto a big reel and I never, ever saw them again. Uh, I, just, I can't believe it, because it, it would have fitted so well yeah. into this film. Uh, I was cursing him earlier on today. I haven't seen him in 30 or 40 years, but... <laughs> you killed him, did you? No, I didn't <laughs> kill him. 
Well, the, the thought did cross always, my the thought did cross my mind. Always, always a revelation. I, di I didn't know you had those um, uh, shots and uh, bits of film. Uh, wonderful. I wish I had some. I never had any myself. No. But, uh, yeah, I wish I had some. Yeah, but I haven't anymore, Hugh. You weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> they, no, 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 I they drifted. I they drifted <laughs> off into the ether. They drifted off into the ether. I'm afraid. Um, one thing I, I think a lot of us wonder, you know, thinking what an amazing album Odyssey and Oracle was, how terrible it was that the band had already split up and it took such a long time, I think, for, for it to find its place. And also these horrific but by no means unusual stories about a band working their arses off and getting 10 quid between them and someone else after yeah. you played 40,000 people 10 nights in a row. Um, how do you look back on your on your early career as musicians, because you all went on later, and not be bitter. Was there a time when you were bitter about being ripped off, about not having your due? Being ripped off, yes, that was, that was really, we reckoned it was about two million quid at the time in the 60s. And um, yeah. that's how the way people thought of the managers and agents were making the money out of us, really. But the worst, best thing is, of course, we're still friends, which is a big rarity, you know. And also for me, when I was touring with Argent later, I uh, met Jimi Hendrix at a party, and he said, oh, yes, you're in the zombies. And he, you, and he sang to me, Time of the Season. What? A cappella. <laughs> not not many people can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think in terms of bitterness, personally, I find it sort of comes in waves. I mean, it goes as well. Just every, and as you get older, the waves come less frequently. But there are times when, I, when I, I, I try and concentrate on the future and what's next. We've just recorded a new album. It charted in both countries in the sales charts. Um, we're already thinking about the next album, and that's what energizes us, thinking about the future all the time. But every once in a while, a little memory, you know, rears its ugly head, and I think life could have been very different if, if we'd been handled in a different way. And there again, Rod has once said to me that if we'd have had lots of money when we were 20 and 21, would we still be here now? I mean, yeah. they were crazy times, you know, and if, if you'd had millions of pounds, which we could have had at that time, would we still be here now? I don't know. In the end, none of it matters because we are, we are what we are. We're, we're all happily married. We all have wonderful lives. And maybe I've got a theory that if you just change one thing in your life, it, and I'm not the first person to say this, it changes everything. So I'll take all the, all the bad deals and all the terrible managers, I'll take it all because we've ended up where we are and how we are now. And still like each other. And still like I each other. Uh, mm. I, think, I think I heard a song title work on it, this one of the It changes everything. Yeah. And um, I, I, I agree with that. Bitterness may be, is a, perhaps a slightly strong word because it's an emotion that you shouldn't um, let hanker in your, in your mind no. for too long. Um, yeah, I mean, upset, I'm, I'm happy, sad about the fact that we, we called it a day when we did. I mean, um, I would love to, and I think Colin, you probably agree, we would love to have carried on and maybe we weathered the storm. But, you know, what's written is, is what's written. And you know what? Nobody could have ever possibly written the, the next part of the story, which is us in the last 20 years or so, which have been um, just, just magic, absolute magic. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if it's too much um, for us to expect if there's an album or a band we love that, you know, we like to imagine they really are mates. And of course, all of you have worked in the business and know that for a lot of reasons, people may not be, or relationships are difficult. Standing on a stage can be toxic. Um, there is so much laughter in this film that if you guys are sworn enemies, you're doing an excellent job of acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, look, I mean, th that is the thing that keeps you playing, really, is if you enjoy it, if you're having fun, we all love writing, recording, and performing music. That's the first thing. That's the most important thing. But keep also, we, we know it's a serious business, but we, we never stop laughing as well. We get, we get the job done and then we just have a wonderful time. 
Totally agree with that. Okay. Yes. Totally, yeah. Totally agree with that. I'm still playing, uh, and who would have thought it? Um, I couldn't have written the, uh, the the script for what's happened in these last few years: the touring of America, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the uh, this documentary, which I think is absolutely wonderful, and the fact that I I still play now here where I live, and uh, it, 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 it's just the story that goes on. It's wonderful. Do people ask all of you, I mean, some of it is covered in the documentary about the making of Odyssey and Oracle. You've made lots of wonderful records and you have many more to come, but you'll forgive us, many of us, for focusing on trying to work out what the magic is. I'm watching the story and they're pushing the piano away as you're trying to sing and you're, yes. you're running out at midnight. How the heck did you make a record that is that lush, beautiful, incredible, and otherworldly while people were pushing the piano away from you. And you <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a bit tricky. That was, in the, that was in the middle of a song called Changes. I don't know if I actually <laughs> said that in there. And I, I'll always remember that. I like to think that you can hear the, hear the squeaking wheels of the piano <laughs> on the track. But I thought not... that was you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, I tell you, in my humble opinion, the real crux of Odyssey and Oracle is the wonderful songwriting. It's, it's, uh, every song... It's very nice of you, Colin. <laughs> well, you said you pay me a check later. You know? <laughs> okay. Um, right. Every song is absolutely wonderful and uh, all written by uh, Chris and Rod Argent. And I think that's where it all comes from. That I've always thought that if you haven't got a good song, you can all pack up and go home. That, that's, you know, people go in the studio and they waste weeks and months and they haven't got any really good material. It's, it is, it's so sad. But at, for that album, they were just wonderful songs. And they, well, perhaps one of the other things, there were, there were many things. The, the staff at Abbey Road were the, the best engineers in the world at that time. Good so timekeeping as well, by the sounds of it. it. <laughs> was very, I mean, it was very regimented, but in a way it was good for us because we had a very limited budget. We only had a thousand pounds, which in, even in those days, Abbey Road's expensive. It's many things, many wonderful things, but above all else, it's bloody expensive. <laughs> and so a thousand pounds isn't going to go very far. But with their clock watching, we s 10 to 1, you have to stop, 2 to 5, and 7 to 10. It, it really energized us, and we had to get it done. And I think there's a lot of energy on that album. And it, it comes about in a funny way, in, in, in the regimented hours of Abbey Road. That gives us energy. The, the, the low budget that we had, a thousand pounds, it gives us energy. And doing it ourselves, we, we mm. produced and uh, did everything ourselves. Of course. And rehearsed weeks beforehand each right. song. That was mm. very important. Absolutely. Hugh, what's your you memory? Said, yeah, well, absolutely. Chris just took the words straight out because I think it was all down to uh, uh, relentless rehearsing um, in, a low, in a village hall close to where we all live and uh, just getting everything as best we could before we actually committed to tape. And that, that was so important, so important. As you say, Colin, with uh, that limited budget, it did put the, um, it put the, <laughs> the stress on it. Yeah. Um, I have to say, you very kindly said the quality of songwriting was important, but just pretend you're not in the room. Let me ask the other two. Do you think it has something to do with... Absolutely. When you meet and work <laughs> with people like Colin Blunstone and Rod Argent, <laughs> I mean, that, uh, that got, got makes you want to do the great songs. It really is, I think it was the fact that we grew up together, really, and we came from two different schools in the same city. So, you know, it was growing up. Don't, don't forget, of course, that, um, as you quite rightly say, Chris, uh, the, the wonderful writing and... Uh, magical talent that Rod has of uh, the songs and the arranging and yourself of course but don't forget of course that um, it needed the best rhythm section in the world well obviously <laughs> <laughs> oh we we'll look into that you yeah. <laughs> and and i've got to say so much so worked so much better after you'd been introduced to each other that was oh yes <laughs> <laughs> when you found out my name you yeah i didn't know his name for about the first few <laughs> Before I forget, because we, we've not much more time, but you do have a three-night stand, well, a three-day stand, coming up in St. Albans, yes. uh, the 10th to the 12th, called Begin Here. It's a good, good album title, actually. Um, <laughs> well, it, yes, it's actually we ought to use <laughs> that. the album title <laughs> of, our, no. of our first album. So do, do uh, either, would any of you like to tell us what we can expect? 
I mean, the internet can tell us, but yeah, you know, it's I always nice so, if yes. you do. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's a weekend full of zombie things um, <laughs> in St. Albans. I think it starts off, actually, it starts off down the boozer where we first met. That's um, not a good, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it, what, what was it called? The uh, uh, I can't remember it now. That's not fair. The, We've just got water here. What was the <laughs> name of the pub, you? Blacksmith's Arms. Blacksmith's Arms. Oh, right, yeah. Well, it starts off down at the Blacksmith's Arms on Friday next week, where all the people who have travelled will meet and get together, and uh, maybe we'll go in there and have a quick half with them as well. And then it goes up to the St. Albans Museum, where they're going to see a zombie exhibit and hopefully a little bit of live music. Um, and then the film's playing the next morning. And then there are various other things. There's a zombie map, so you can walk around St. Albans. And, and I have to, I have to do a talk on love songs and anthems. You are? Yes, right, yeah. Well, uh, on the you, if, if I can... <laughs> I can't remember anything, so... <laughs> but on the zombie map, I'm a bit worried, because uh, I, I made an album where... Uh, where there's a picture of me under a big old tree in the middle of nowhere. And on the, zomb on the zombie map, that tree is positioned. So they're going to be walking around and they're promised that I'm going to be spending the afternoon <laughs> under this bloody tree. <laughs> Something got to cut it down. <laughs> and I say, well, if it's raining, they can find the tree on their own. And I'm it's also... A little, uh, yeah, yeah, I, there's also, there's also um, a little uh, uh, drum clinic between uh, oh, yes. Yes. oh yes, oh yes, the old, and uh, we'll be talking to some people. I hope will turn up, and we'll talk about my uh, view and how I put what, what I did in, into our early stuff, and of course what Steve does now. And I think it will be absolutely wonderful. I can't wait for that. Got to be honest. Does anyone wear us? We're not talk. We Hughes down here, so we're talking to him there. We're not avoiding him over our shoulders, <laughs> by the way. There's a screen down here. Well, I'm normal. <laughs> um, we've got just to, so everybody who would like to find out more um, about that weekend, the internet is your friend. Yes, so I think uh, if you look on the zombies music, that will, yeah. that will tell you everything that's happening. And, and it goes on into Sunday as well. Is there no yeah. end? Is there no end to this? Mm -hmm. um, um, so it, and perhaps Let next year, <laughs> next year you could have the other zombies bands that didn't involve any of you. Perhaps you could invite the <laughs> <laughs> members of ZZ Top. Yes, yes that would be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, just got one more question for you, three lovely men who gave us so many reasons to smile watching this. And um, do you have a? F this isn't skill testing, I promise. Was there a moment? in the documentary that surprised you or made you smile? Your favorite bit, just one. Oh, uh, uh, Chris, do you want to start? Uh, <laughs> I suppose being inducted and seeing Susanna Hoff, and she gave yes. a lovely speech and everything. That was, the mo that was the best moment, actually. We got recognition after so many years. That, that was, was important. It was lovely. And that was only a short clip of her speech, and it, it was fantastic. Susanna Hoff is standing up in front of 17,000 people and, and talking better than most of the politicians of today. She spoke so well, um, I, I, was, I was amazed. But I think, I've forgotten what the question was. So I just, favorite moment, <laughs> oh, favorite, favorite moment, moment in I'll the keep talking as if I know what I'm talking in. about. <laughs> I spent a compelling. lifetime doing this. <laughs> but, um, you know what, I, I don't well, think I can top that. Um, but obviously, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a pinnacle of achievement, and yes. uh, we are just just absolutely fantastic. What I thought was really lovely was that um, they they made it their business to send a cameraman to where I live now and take some pictures of me here, and also uh, with the current things I do, and uh, in England, and that 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 was a bit of a magical moment too. I've got to be honest. You know, I was just thinking that one thing that really took me by surprise, they found these old films of us when we were 18 years old. And I remember Rod explaining that he'd always felt he was Mr. Super Cool. <laughs> and, I, and, and, I, and, Good job not here. and I think secretly, subconsciously, I was with him. I think I thought I was Mr. Super Cool. And then we see this film of us when we were 18 and we look absolutely dreadful. And 
It was a, a little... show of hands in the audience. <laughs> um, anyway. well, it, was a, it was a little bit of a shock for, for all of us, I think. But, but it was a fun shock. I mean, you know, 18 years old yeah. is great. We think you guys look great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much, much you. all three thank of you, for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.